Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another webinar of our educational sessions project. Today, we have a very special guest, and that is Temple. I'm sure you heard this name before. Uh, Temple is one of the most popular uh, vendors of the Atlassian marketplace. And today, we are going to be learning how to master uh, resource planning. We have Temple Planner, which is a marketplace app. Um, this is our agenda for today. We're gonna be going over uh, the introductions. I promise to be quick here. Uh, then we're gonna go over the features and benefits of using Temple Planner. Uh, we're gonna cover a use case and then we're gonna finish the webinar with a demo and a Q&A session. The host of this webinar is us, Service Rocket. We are a solution partner, a platinum solution partner, and we've been partners with Atlassian for more than 20 years. If you want to know more about us, you can just visit this website right here. And if you decide to get in touch, please don't be shy. We're gonna be more than happy to get to know you. And here I have a picture of Melissa Paji. Melissa uh, works for Temple as a channel account manager. She's the one who's going to be teaching you know, about resource planning today. We are super happy to, to have uh, Melissa as today's uh, speaker. And with that said, Melissa, I'm gonna let you take the lead from here. Thanks so much, Mario, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. As Mario mentioned, my name is Melissa and I am the Enterprise Partner Manager for North and South America here at Tempo. So if we want to go ahead and switch slides here, yep. you will see a brief overview on Tempo. As some of you already know, we offer integrated solutions for time management, resource planning, and budget management. We are one of the largest vendors within the Atlassian marketplace, and our 20,000 plus customers gain an exceptional understanding of how time and effort are spent. With data insights at their fingertips, our customers are able to focus their people's time on the most impactful work. Moving on to our next slide. The Tempo product that we will be talking about today is Tempo Planner. This tool offers businesses an optimized workforce, extended visibility, as well as actionable insights. As I'm sure you all know, many project managers rely on spreadsheets to support them in their resource planning. But when it comes to planning for big projects with many teams and stakeholders who are geographically dispersed, spreadsheets have some real drawbacks. They can be bulky and inaccurate and require significant expertise to use in any kind of advanced way. As an alternative to Excel spreadsheets, Tempo Planner has a lot to offer those who need a tool for resource planning. Unlike Excel, Tempo Planner has automation and it's centralized in JIRA, so users don't need to jump between tools. The interface is sleek and easy to navigate, which makes it great for every type of user. If you have the right permissions, you are able to quickly generate reports to get a quick, quick grasp of capacity. When it comes to usability and efficiency, there is really no comparison. So moving on to our next slide, we will be discussing today um, a use case from the entertainment industry. We are unfortunately unable to release the name of this client, uh, but when they originally came to Service Rocket, they had three main asks. First, they were looking for a tool that excelled in resource planning and allowed them to schedule their employees and teams on specific projects in JIRA. Second, resource visibility was very important to them. They needed to be able to view the current and future state of all projects and resources at once. And lastly, utilization. The client requested to have a solution within a single system, which was JIRA, where they could compare actual time with planned time for their resources. Service Rocket immediately thought of Tempo Planner after discussing these needs with their client. 
So moving on, I am going to start the demo. I'm going to share my screen here. All right, so we are gonna start here at our resource planning view within Planner. So here you will see a list of all your resources that you have access to on the left-hand side, as well as their availability for the designated time period. Here is where you will select the duration or time period, which is going to be set for the month of March. As you see here, we have a list of all of your users within your organization, which you may not be interested in seeing when planning for specific projects or tasks. So we will use here our resource filter where you are able to select your teams, users, roles, or our newest feature within Planner on cloud, which I will demonstrate at the end of the demo, which is our generic resources. So for example, if you need to view all of your developers, and check their availability. You will simply drop this down, click roles, and select developer. So here you will see all of the all of the developers within your organization. Something to note, there is only one role per person in a team, but a person can be in multiple teams and therefore multiple roles. However, at Tempo, we recommend having one role per user. So you will also see here within the resource planning view, check marks, as well as yellow and red bars. These are there to show how much is planned based on current capacity of specific users. The red bar here means that the user is overbooked for their daily capacity. The yellow bar, as you will see within many users here, are the hours that each user is booked meaning that they still have additional hours available for that specific day based on their designated capacity. The green check mark, as you already see some of these users have for the month of March, means that the user is booked to their allocated capacity for that specific day. So now you may be wondering how to calculate capacity. This is done from a workload scheme. You can define different workload schemes for your resources by simply going to settings here on the left-hand side. Under working days, you will then see workload. I'm gonna click this here. This will show the specific working days for specified teams and users, as well as how many hours they work per day. As you see here, Team Malaysia works eight hours per day, Monday through Thursday, and then eight hours on Sunday. And then we also have here our part-time employees, which are working four hours per day, Monday through Friday you are able to create as many workload schemes as you need. As you can see, you can do this by office, by location, as well as full-time and part-time employees. So we're gonna go back to our developers here. So we're just gonna click on the planning icon. We're gonna change our duration back to March. And we're going to filter back to our developers. So say I am a manager looking for a developer for a project that is going to run from March 7th through the 11th. So this specific project is going to involve building a new Tempo website. So looking at the list of all of our developers, we will see here that Eglo happens to be available the entire week that we have this project. So I am going to click on the starting date, which is here, March 7th. And you will see now the plan time dialog box that pops up. Here you can plan on an issue or a project. An issue is already created by you in JIRA since Tempo is fully integrated within JIRA. This may be epics, stories, bugs, task, or subtask. But since we're planning for a project, we're going to click project here and we're going to type build Tempo website. This is going to pop up. So you will see under there, there is a description box where you have the option to add any additional notes you may need. So we are going to click underneath that, which is at the period box. And we are going to select the dates of the project, which already populates for March 7th 
and then we're going to have it end on March 11th. Then we're going to note that this is going to take four hours per day. Underneath that, you have the option to repeat this specific project, never, weekly, or biweekly. Right now, we are not planning on repeating this project. Underneath that, there's also a box for a reviewer. So this could mean if you need to get it approved by your boss or a specific HR or whatever department you are in. And as you've noticed now, everything in Planner is shown within hours. So we're going to plan this time and it's going to populate as four hours per day for EGLO for March 7th through the 11th. So now I'm going to click on the little arrow next to EGLO's name, which allows me to expand on her plan work and see it in a little more detail. So it will show that she has planned for 20 hours total of March 7th through the 11th. So next, I'm going to show you how to plan vacations within Planner using our internal issue feature. Within this feature, users can plan on non-project related work. So now that Eglo has completed working on the website, she has decided that she definitely needs to go and take a vacation. She wants to start her vacation the week following her project. So she is going to start it on the 14th. So we will click the date that we want to start our vacation and we have issue selected here. We're gonna use the drop down box and we're gonna click these three little dots right here. And we're going to click internal issues. And right here, it's already starred. We're gonna click vacation time. So we are going to click period, have the dates of her vacation run from March 14th to March 18th, have that run the full eight hours per day. She unfortunately is not going to repeat this yet. And we're gonna have to have this get approved by her boss, which is Taylor. So we're gonna click Taylor's name here and we're gonna click, click plan time. So now that her vacation is planned, I'm going to change our duration up here on the right-hand side from weeks to days. And I'm going to update the duration to the week where her vacation is planned. So we're going to update it from March 14th through March 18th. So we are going to expand her timeline again. And this will allow us to see her vacation plans is in more detail as well as make any changes to it. So you will see here that her planned vacation is still shaded, which means it is pending approval. Once it's approved, it will show up as white. So now to make changes to her vacation, say Eglo has decided to wait to start her vacation until the 15th. I'm going to hover over the 14th, click these little three dots here, and I am going to change her vacation to start on the 15th. So you will see it updated here, and you also have within these three dots, you can approve and reject the vacation. So that's where when Taylor gets the notification that Eglo has submitted a new plan, she will go in there and she will either approve her vacation and or reject it. So next I am going to show you how to import plans from JIRA issues. So we are gonna go back to weeks. We are gonna click this little arrow for EGLO and we are going to change the duration back to March 1st through the 31st and we're going to click apply here. So we are going to start off by filtering by teams. And these teams are gonna be the teams that you want the plans imported from. So I'm gonna choose business and sales as well as our development team here. So filtering by teams, um, you are going to do that. And then we are going to filter here. So this matters for the JIRA issues I'm about to import as you will see here in a minute. Another thing you'll need to have in order to import plans from JIRA issues is the manage plans permissions for each of your teams. So to do that, we're just gonna go to settings and under data access, you will see permission roles. 
So now you're just going to want to make sure manage plans is selected for everyone here. So you are able to then go in and import your plans for your JIRA issues. So we are going to go back to our resource planning view and make sure the date is set for March. And then we're going to filter by our teams again. And then with all of that set up, we are, I'm going to click the import from JIRA button here at the right. Once this window appears, you are able to change a filter or add another team if it is needed. Today, I am just going to stick with business and sales as well as our development team. So I'm going to click the issue that I'm wanting to import, which is design the mobile app for Taylor, which is due on March 11th. So I'm gonna click this and I'm going to create import. So I'm gonna scroll down here and you will see Taylor on March 11th has designed the mobile app right here. So you will see here next to Taylor's name that the import icon appears. It will go away once you refresh your screen and also you will see the import icon here right next to the specific plan. This will be staying next to each individual plan as it will tell you that there's a connection between the plan and corresponding JIRA issue. So next, I'm going to take you to our reports tab. If you have both timesheets and planner, you will see all three of these. If you just have planner, you're just going to see this plan time box right here. So first we're gonna look at our planned time report. Within this report, you will see all planned hours created within the instance whether in resource planning view or on a dedicated issue. What's also cool about this is you are able to slice and dice all of this plan data. For example, we're gonna go back to our developers. We are going to filter by roles like we've been doing and click developer. Then we're gonna click create. And here you will now see within this report, you can see the projects and issues of all developers within your organization and what they are planned on for the month of March. You are then able to click the right-hand box here, which is export, and you are able to export the data to multiple formats. So moving on to our next report, which is plan versus actual. This report shows both the historical planning and what was actually completed. It is also a good overview of the utilizations of resources, like were they being utilized as planned or were they being overutilized? For example, if I was a manager of a developer, again, we're gonna filter by roles and click developer. I could filter by their specific role and then look this over before doing any additional plans for my team for the future. So now, before concluding the demo and moving on to the Q&A portion of our webinar, I wanted to go through the newest feature within Planner that I mentioned at the beginning of this demo, which is generic resources. The, this new feature allows customers to assign generic unnamed resources to tasks and plans. This new feature has been highly requested by our users for new employees coming into their organization because it simply just makes planning future activities more accurate even when full details are still being decided. So to create a generic resource, you will go to Teams here on the left-hand side. You will choose the team you want to create the generic resource for. So for example, we are going to choose business and sales team because we have a new partner, join, new partner manager joining the team in Q2. So I'm going to click this here and I'm going to select add generic resource. I'm going to type partner manager Q2 here. I'm going to cl click create, and click save. So you will see this pop up here, partner manager Q2. So I'm gonna go back to our resource planning view here and I'm going to show you how to plan the generic resource. So we will click the clock here on the right-hand side, which is to plan time. 
I'm going to select the drop down menu generic resource and then choose our partner manager for Q2. I'm then going to type BS24, which is for product training for new employees. So since they are starting in Q2, we're going to plan them for two hours of this every day of what will be their first week of employment, which is going to be April 4th through April 8th. I'm gonna put the two hours here and we're going to click plan time. So I'm going to change the duration to the month of April where this individual will be starting. And you will see down here, the new partner manager for generic resource. So as well as you can drop down here, you can see it in more detail that they are planned for a total of 10 hours of product training. And then it shows the issue key right here. So as you see here, we have many users listed and it may be easier for a specific manager or maybe HR even to view the generic resources while planning onboarding or just new employee training overall. So within this new feature, we are able to filter by generic resource. You can add multiple generic resources to this as well. So we're gonna click generic resource here. First, I'm gonna start with our partner manager for Q2. So say we also, Want to add our account executive hire for Q2 as well. And you are able to see everyone on this view. So this is the end of our demo. We will be moving on to the Q&A session of this webinar. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And do we have any questions? Um, wow. Wow, Melissa, what a demo. Absolutely amazing. Uh, it looks like we are already getting some questions. Um, so the first one that I see here is, how do you remove a generic uh, resource? So to do that, let me see. What you'll do is um, you will go to the team section that you created the generic resource in you will select the team that the generic resource is in, and then you will just scroll down to the generic resource and click the X next to their name. So it is super simple to do. Do you want to show us? I can't, I can't stop share, sharing my screen if you want to. Uh, sure. Let's see here. Share screen. Sure. Okay, so to do this, you will just click Teams. Go to business and sales. And then we can just delete the one that I just created, hover over that. Just remove it like that. Okay. Super simple. Yep. And then uh, let's see what other questions we are getting here. Uh, okay. We have another one here. Uh, what is the size? of the organizations that usually uh, use Temple Planner? Are we talking about a small business or they are usually enterprise uh, clients? So Temple, Temple Planner will definitely target to any size business from small to medium size all the way up to large enterprise customers. Gotcha. Right, we have another one here from Paulina. Hi, Paulina, how are you doing? Um, so Paulina is asking, can you show how a project is defined? Is this the same as a Jira project or a company defined initiative? Um, so that one, I think I will have to get back to you on, um, but if you wanna shoot Mario your email address, I can get back to you later on today. Sure, absolutely. Uh, would that be okay, Paulina? If I could share uh, your email address? Actually, yeah, I'm if sorry. If you want, I can jump in as well. Uh, oh, hi, okay, it's, Max. It's, it's Max from Temple. Uh, Paulina, in terms of your question, a project is going to be the same as a Jira project. So it's basically you do your business as usual, where you set up your, your Jira projects, your Jira permissions and whatnot. And then afterwards, it's just about uh, integrating that information with Temple, which will happen automatically. So. Um, right. 
so moving on um, let us know Pauline if that if that answers uh, but moving on for now we have another question here uh, which industry do you see uh, using Temple Planner the most? Is there a specific type of industry? So Temple Planner works in all industries that we need to be planning time for our projects or issues. So, all right. Um, right, it looks like we have no other questions. Um, let's see, maybe we can wait a little bit or if if not, I guess, I guess we're good. That was an amazing uh, webinar, Mel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Um, so yeah, um, that's it for now. I'm just gonna share the topic for our next webinar. We hope to see you there. It's gonna be an amazing one. Uh, Fugi from Service Rocket is gonna be the one uh, conducting this webinar. And I get a feeling that it's going to be amazing. Thank you very much for joining today. I hope that everybody have a nice day.